Magandang, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to People Manager on Cam. Maayong hapon sa mga siya. Mopay na kulog sa mga waray. Maray na hapon sa mga bikulano. Good afternoon sa lahat ng nanonood saan ka man naroon sa Pilipinas at wherever you are in the world. Welcome again to People Manager on Cam. This is the online show of the People Management Association of the Philippines the premier association of HR professionals and people managers in the country. My name is Joanne. I'm the APAC Customer Success Manager of Dia Carison, and I am your host for today. I'm so excited again to be with you all on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. And because of that, I had to transfer to another location for our show. But the show must go on. This is our fourth episode for 2022. This show airs every third Wednesday afternoon and we have four segments. All of these segments aim to share and discuss critical HR and business matters. And for anyone who are joining us, hello, um, it's JB. Thank you so much um, for being with us. And Sir Obed, hello, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Sir Obed, for always being with us. Really appreciate your support all the time. We are so honored that you are always there for us thank you so much to those who are watching us for the first time this show has four episodes that follows the acronym of the map so p for people to watch where we highlight our peers the leaders in hr and business or upon talent in the community then we have m for months this second segment enables us to be updated with current issues with urgencies and items that are non-negotiable then the third segment is a for anticipate this Please talk about things, events, ideas, innovation, or breakthroughs that we all have to look forward to. Then the fourth segment is key for Break Your Heart, where we want you to all be excited with health and wellness, lifestyle tips, fashion trends, and hobbies. Our theme for this month is escape. As HR and business leaders, we all have a lot of challenges to address and overcome. And we will talk about that this afternoon. What are these common challenges we are facing today? We will also be talking about the quick employee exodus, and these are keeping us awake these days. We will also talk about top problem solving innovation in people's management. And we have so much, I'm looking forward to that. And to help us re energize and renew our energy, we will feature top chill destinations in the Philippines. So watch out for that and stay on until it's, this will just be for an hour, and I'm sure you will get a lot, you will learn a lot from our events. So, to our viewers, I want to hear from your thoughts. What do you want to escape from in your line of work? That's the first question. I hope that you know you will let us know. And also, if you have any suggested destinations in the city, we can all go and relax. Let us know your suggestions through the comment box, and we would love to interact with you. Let's get started in our conversation. So, let's go to our first segment. Our topic is what HR practitioners want to escape from in your line of work. I'm so excited that our segment host for this afternoon is the managing consultant of Idea Central. He's also the editor in chief of EMAX magazine, Mr. Jovenir Bataikan. Hi, Job. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Joanne. You, you dazzle all the time. And I'm here to talk about, you know, we did a we did a, actually a random check on some of the attendees during the GMM, hybrid GMM last month. And these are the answers that we got from them with the question, if it were all up to you with the kind of work that you do in HR, which aspect would you like to escape from? Now, mind you, this is not an escape thing that you know you want to leave because you can never escape from your own commitment and your passion to serve. It's more about if you take a breather from all the tasks that you have, which one would you like to escape from? This is the answer. If I have to terminate an employee, I have to terminate an employee. Stop it. Stop it. The papers, the pa resignations. Conduct um, an exit interview. Attrition. No show. Payroll. Terminating <laughs> employees and at the same time, people analytics. Payroll. If I have to terminate an employee. 
Okay, so those are the answers. I would like to thank the following for their replies. We have Bernadette Faduga, the HR Officer of Mapicon. Lisa Trinidad, General Manager of Grovevite Staffing Services. We had Corinne Patron of Aboitis Power. We also had Ms. Debbie Centeno, Lorraine Joyce Librando, and from Icon Executive Search, we had Jay Avenida, Laura Del Ang, and of course, a very familiar face that I will call in a short while, the HR business partner of PPC Holdings, Sir Mark, Enrique Hernandez, Jesse Soriano, HR Director, and Andrea Caloco, HR Manager. So at this point in time, I would like to invite once again, Ms. Joanna Setre, and this time, our another reactor who will do the segment later on, Mr. Mark Hernandez, but from the survey. Ms. Joanne and Sir Hi, Mark. Hi, Jov. Hi, Mark. It's Mark here with us already. Okay, very good. So we're still waiting for Sir Mark, but, but while we're waiting, Ms. Joanne, I think we should jumpstart the conversation already. Yes. We heard about their answers. And I know, like, for example, somebody mentioned about files and paperwork. And that's I something I would also like to escape. Would you agree? <laughs> I agree. Especially when you have tons of paperwork to do. And then, because of course, sometimes it takes away, it takes our time away from other things that we yes. have to do. So I, I do agree with that. And um, sometimes it's this paperwork, you know, t also talks about areas that we have to improve in terms of efficiency. So, you know, sometimes I don't like to, to deal with that. <laughs> Why are companies still not pushing for, you know, the outright elimination of these documents? And I think a lot of us are actually into the, you know, digitalization of files. So what's keeping them aside from, you know, budget, of course. Yeah, I, I think it's also an appreciation of how these technology can help you know, in terms of efficiency, because of course budget is there. And also the mm -hmm. appreciation of what's the ROI from these yes. investments, right? So um, that's my that's my um, assumption there. Maybe th they need to understand more how this can help the business actually um, in terms of, you know, getting more returns. So I think we have to, there, there's a lot of education that still needs to be done. Yes, and of course it's environmentally friendly to do so. And quite efficient as well if you have access to your file digitally. Exactly. But also I think, Jov, there's so many technology also out there. It takes a lot of time to understand each one and to also mm -hmm. decide which one you would go for. Yes. I'm not sure. How about you? I think so, because you really have to find that you know something that works for everybody in the team, not just for the executives. Everybody has to have access. Like for example, even your your you know, your associates, for example. Those people on the floor, in the manufacturing floor, they need to have access to the JDs, for example. So do they have the technology to support that? I think that's a major consideration. The it other thing... <laughs> yes. The <laughs> other thing that they mentioned was the need... I mean, of course, they want to escape from labor issues. Can you? I don't think we can. As, <laughs> as people leaders, it's not, and, and labor issues are not just HR concern. All people managers, you know, um, this is labor issues, labor laws. We should all be aware of that. And I don't think we can get away from that. In fact, yeah. we have to embrace it. Yeah. And you, when you talk about, you know, labor for as long as you, you work with people, there's no escape from it. It's a wish list, by the way. The other thing, somebody mentioned about payroll, but I don't want to es escape from my own payroll. But if you're doing everybody else's payroll, what is there to escape from? <laughs> I agree. And I hope nobody would want to escape from doing my payroll as well. Yes. <laughs> but I can just imagine the complex calculations, you know, to process yes. all these payments. And sometimes even just one error can cause compliance issues or legal actions already. So I can understand why they would want to escape from that. I think the root of the problem here is that post, you know, once, once people receive their payroll, that's when the questions arise and dealing with these questions actually takes time. The final, exactly. the final thing is attrition. Not apparition, it's attrition, Joanne. <laughs> this one is quite difficult, especially when you let people go. How do you talk to yeah. them? It's like a James Ingram song, no easy way to break somebody's heart. Is there an easy way around this when you let people go? I don't think there is, even when we're talking of just one person or if you're talking about um, hundreds or thousands of individuals, I don't think they'll 
be easier for any one of us. But I think compassion is, is really very important as well. Um, as people leaders, we have to make sure that we protect the dignity of these individuals and we also provide the best support available for them. Yeah. I think one CEO, if you, you, I think you've read about it, heard about this, even you watched the video, he actually gathered everyone in a Zoom call and fired everyone in the Zoom call. And that was disaster for his company. So I I think, yeah, it's, it's a, maybe it's, you know, it's a wish for us to take a breather in some of the most challenging aspects of our role in people management. But we all know there's no escape from it because, you know, we're committed, we're passionate to serve. Exactly, exactly. And we also have to be mindful of the brand of the organization as well. So we also have to protect that. Thank you so much, Joanne, for joining me in this very short discussion. And again, once I would like to thank those who share their insights with us, that one word insight of which part of the work they want to escape from. Let's proceed to the next. Thank you. All right. So thank you so much. And I'm so excited to also, I'm checking our comments. So how about you? What is it that you want to escape from? What From your role, from whatever you're doing right now? Um, and also, do you have any suggestions where to go to relax and to chill as well? We would love to hear your thoughts about that. But while we are waiting for your comments to come in, we will go to our second segment, must. So our topic here is um, lessons that we should all learn about employee exodus. And I'm so excited because we have been in inviting our segment host for some time now, but he's very busy. I'm so happy that he's able to join us finally. He is the chairperson of the PMAPS Research Committee, and he's the HR business partner of Canvas Solutions Incorporated. I'm so happy to welcome Mark Joseph Cancino. Hi, Mark. Welcome. Hi, Ms. Joan, and hi, everyone. Thank you for listening to us. And happy Wednesday, everyone. So for the must segment for today, we'll talk about the great realizations, big lessons, people leaders should learn about employee exodus. So I'm very excited to introduce to you our speaker for today, our guest. We'll have Ms. Jennifer Simons Castillo, Communications Manager of Savvy. Hi, Ms. Jennifer. Hi there. Hello. It's great to see you. How are you? I'm well, Mark. Thanks so much for inviting me. I'm so excited to talk to you today. It's my first time on People Managers on Cam. I'm super excited to be here. And we're also very excited to hear your insights, Jen. So let's start. I know we're very excited for this topic. But before we start, let's just define some terms. So what do we mean when we say employee exodus? Well, it sounds a bit like epic, right? Like when you hear the word exodus, yeah. um, it does feel like a whole bunch of people are leaving. And especially over the past two years, when I know that people managers all across the country have been, you know, trying to keep as many people as possible employed because yeah. this is this is our livelihood. All of us know what it's like to not have income, you know, at some point in time after we've been doing all we can to keep as many people employed as possible. Um, people are leaving and people are leaving in their jobs in record numbers. Um, it's it's a bit difficult to find reliable research um, on the local market. To be honest, Mark, this is a big task for us and the research committee. Um, I agree these numbers, but in 2020, um, the Philippine Statistics Authority told us that 40% of separations in the fourth quarter of 2020 were due to personal issues, right? So that was way up from the year before. Also, 14% of people went AWOL, which is compared mm. to under 10% the year before in 2019. So that was back in 2020. Now, you know, Sprout PH has told us that month-to-month -month attrition last year was 14% higher than, in, than previous to the pandemic. So something is definitely happening. And that, you know, with, in straightforward numbers, Mark, is, is what this great exodus is, I'm yeah. sure. You know, everybody's kind of used to a little bit of a rise in attrition in the first quarter of the year. But this year 
in the past two years, it's really been extra an extraordinary rise. And I think that's why we're starting to call it an exodus. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with that, Jen. So uh, why do you think that despite the lack of jobs because of the pandemic, people laying off, uh, companies laying off people, why do you think are there still a lot of people resigning from their jobs? Well, it's difficult um, to, you know, answer you as the as the head of the research committee with with yeah. guesses, right? So I have to refer to to Savvy's workplace market intelligence. Yeah. Like our company is has grown into a 360 degree solution platform for employee wellness because we know that really the backbone of engagement with our employees is their wellness at work. Yeah. And engagement, as we see engagement levels rise throughout companies, then we see people stay longer at companies because they're simply happy with happier with you, right? So this has been something that people managers everywhere have become more and more aware of. And that's why we will keep talking about employee engagement, right? How it's so challenging, especially in the hybrid workplaces we are all dealing with now. Um, so the so as engage as as a company that's aiming to support HR professionals in their engagement efforts and you know to support your employees' well-being, we really do conduct quite regular ongoing surveys of our customers. Who are the employees of our partner companies? Yeah. So the one that is of particular interest to this discussion is a survey that we've had running since the end of April this year. So this is very new data. Uh, we have yet to publish in a paper. Um, so you guys are getting the first look, actually. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, this is a survey of 10,000 separated employees uh, over the past, like, two months, right? We have found that, okay, so 67% of them, as expected, already had new jobs, yes. you know, signed up with new employers when they resigned, when they were separated, when they declared separate, they wanted to be separated. But what's interesting to this discussion, Mark, is that the number of people who did not have a new job when they resigned was about was 37 percent right so that's really huge of those people we asked further they left why they decided to resign even if they had no other employer yeah. waiting and the top reason 37 percent of of our answers um said that this was due to office location and work from home policies yeah. changing. So given that the majority of our survey respondents were in the BPO industry and the government made a big push for return to work at yeah. in, during this quarter too, it's really understandable that this is a jarring change for so many white collar workers. And they they ask themselves, they start asking themselves questions, you know, why am I working at this job? Does it really align with my personal views what's in it for me you know is it really the finances that are the bottom line right i mean compensation and benefits are always top of mind when we're talking about retention and recruitment um there's another whole discussion there sir mark about you know salary what do they call it there's a for term sure. for this salary and benefits you... total rewards package yeah, total rewards packages. I mean, that's what we aim to support at Savvy. But there is something that labor economists call a salary compression, where new hires tend to get higher salaries than older or, sorry, more yeah. tenured employees, right? And that's just a function of negotiation and the younger uh the workforce gets the more confident they are in in their value and negotiating for higher salaries so there there are a couple of reasons why people are yeah. leaving 
<laughs> really, really alarming no- number because like what we've been talking about, despite not having financial security, people opt to resign because they wanted to prioritize well-being and wellness, as he said, right? And then uh, it makes me think that it's no longer just an HR challenge. It's really a leadership challenge, a business challenge. So what do you consider as like the major challenges for businesses in relation to employee exodus? Well, they they call this in the U.S. the Great Resignation, right? Yeah. Um, so I'd like to bring you to the answers of the man who actually coined that phrase. Um, his name is Anthony Klotz, and he really goes into the psychology of how working from home has changed how we think about you know, the intersections or the overlapping of life and work and what we want out of both, right? So he wants us to, he recommends that we all take this as an opportunity to, you know, instead of going back to business as usual, as we now return to this post-pandemic normal, to understand that our businesses now, our workplaces, need to be integrated with our workers' humanity, right? Um, he actually suggests um, that we ask ourselves these these few questions. If I may, Sir Mark, recommend yeah, some sure. questions for everybody to ask. So number one, do I need all of my employees in the office full-time, right? I rethink of your attendance policies, maybe in order. Of course, this is not applicable to all industries, right? So it really does um, need to align with your needs as a business and your culture, right? How much time do you really need for your employees to be physically in the office? Number two is, do I have a mental health policy? Do I need to create one separate from my wellness policy, right? Because of the obvious rise in um, awareness around mental health and the multitude of issues that can affect your workers' well-being. Mental health is right there at the top of the list, even before the pandemic, right? Dole was really pushing for this in operational um, health and safety uh, policies. Um, My question number three for everybody would be to take a look at your performance evaluations. Right? Do they align with what is important to your organization's culture as well as what is empl- important to your employees? Right, That's a good place to really identify what's important to you and what's important to your teams. If they, they must overlap and they must intersect in the majority of questions, right? That's a good way to evaluate if your culture is aligned with what your employees want out of their job. And then you can start thinking about benefit packages and how that aligns with what's important to your employees. Yeah, really great questions, Ms. Jen. So for those of you who have just listened to us, so ask yourselves about three things, about attendance, about mental health policy, and about performance. And I agree, Ms. Jen, I'm really happy that even before the pandemic, the government has been initiating policies already, right, on telecommuting, OSH or Occupational Safety and Health and also Mental Health. So it's just that we haven't implemented that really seriously before, but now it's like the pandemic has driven us to implement these things. And I agree with you, it's time to bring back the human in HR and organizations. It used to be a nice to have and now it's a must have. Yep, that's why we, you are in the must segment of this program because we really have to consider this employee exodus. So you, lastly, for my last question, Ms. Jen, you mentioned that the re- great resignation is present in the U.S. Do you see it happening in the Philippines? And what, if not, what do you think is the situation of the Philippines now? Oh, we definitely see it happening. Our So Savvy supports um, over 100 corporations, right? So these are the largest employers in the country. And probably maybe some of our our clients are here watching. Hi, guys. Hello there. Um, Comment if you're a client of Savvy. Yes, please let us know. Um, They have really been um, reaching out to us to request further support, right? Because through the pandemic, 
not it wasn't only our employees who were under a lot of pressure hr executive hr practitioners at every level were frontliners of the corporate world and by the second year of the pandemic it was it was getting very very much more challenging right like our jobs as people managers just the tasks just grew exponentially and burnout was something that was happening in HR teams all over the country, all over the world. So, and that's why we actually started really pushing our employee engagement webinars around financial, personal finance education and mental health education. So that's something that Savvy provides for all of our, our clients, all of our HR teams, we support in that regard, not just to, to build up the skills of your HR execs, but also of your employees. I think, yeah. I, did I answer your question, Mark? I'm not sure if I did. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. And thanks as well for sharing for this whole period. Definitely, Employee Exodus is here and then but it's a leadership challenge that we can still address. So we have a lot of support here. You have PMAP, you have Savvy, and you have leaders around the Philippines and around the world to share best practices. So once again, thank you, Ms. Jen, for joining us for today's segment. Thanks Always for having safe. me. See you on LinkedIn. Thank you, thank you Jen. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, Jen, and thanks. thank you so much, Mark, for that discussion. And I do hope that a lot of our employers and leaders um, were watching this segment. And I want to have access to that um, material that Jen mentioned about the great resignation and the questions. Those are a great guide. I like what she said about integrating our strategies, our policies with employee humanity. That's a very... Um, I think there's a lot of wisdom there. Thanks again for sharing that with us. And I'm looking forward to the sharing of our um, audience. Um, those who are watching us and listening right now, do send us um, your thoughts about the great resignation or employee exodus. And also for the clients of Savvy here, um, do let us know um, what are your strategies as well for employee engagement. So thank you so much again for watching us. To those who have just um, joined us, this is the online show of the People Management Association of the Philippines. And we are now moving on to our third segment, Anticipate This. And this time, we will talk about top problem-solving top problem-solving Let's do that again. We will talk about top problem-solving innovations in people management. And I think we will also learn a lot from here. So the first two segments, we have talked about the challenges that we are all experiencing. Let's try to determine what can we do to make sure that we are able to address all these challenges, all these problems. I'm so excited to welcome our segment host for this afternoon, a consultant from Viventis Search Asia and Peak Learning Incorporated, James Hargrove. Hi, James. Good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Hi. Welcome, everyone. And boy, is it my pleasure to be with you all today. And what an exciting event. I mean, very dynamic, fast fire, great information. And I'm very excited to be a part uh, of this program, especially this segment. Well, I'm going to keep this as brief as possible because we have basically have about 15 minutes. So let me start by introducing uh, our next uh, speaker who has 20 years of experience as an HR practitioner gained from various industries across geographies. She is currently the talent management and organization development head of Manila Water. Uh, I'm sorry, Manila Water Company's corporate center and vice chair of the Academe Industry Committee of the People Management Association of the Philippines. With no further ado, let's give a loud virtual uh, uh, welcome to Ms. Mai Miranda. Mai, welcome. Good afternoon, James. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Well, as we all know, based on the program, we have a very exciting topic to address, which is the top problem-solving innovations in people management. So, Mayim, mm -hmm. I want to just let you uh, take the take the floor, take the stage, mm -hmm. and just share with us um, number one, a snapshot of your experience based on what you've seen, what you've witnessed in the workplace, in your organization, when it comes to this transition that we just heard about in the last segment, where 
the government is pushing for most people, if not all people, to return to the office. With that comes the obvious lashback of people being hesitant, reluctant, anxiety, you know, and just saying, why should I even bother coming back to work? How have you and your organization dealt with this? And what sort of innovations have you guys been able to develop, come up with, and implement? Okay. So when we talk about innovation, people usually think about machines, data analytics, etc. But let me just talk about first our purpose as a company and focusing on leadership. So the way to convince our employees to come back to work, although not all the time because of the alert levels, is by allowing our leaders to engage them and communicate with them about the purpose of our company, why we exist in the first place, who are our customers, and why do they need us? Why are we needed in the facilities, in the business areas, etc.? So once they have come to embrace that purpose of ours, our vision, mission, and values, our core values, and of course, our goals, that's the time we introduce all other parts uh, in terms of structure, systems. So the way to convince them, we also look at the way we structure our organization. Is there a way to manage employees, enable them without having to really go to the office? We provide virtual collaboration tools. Of course, everybody probably in this uh, forum have already done that since the pandemic. But on top of this vi virtual collaboration tools that we use, uh, came the problem of Zoom fatigue, right? So our company came up with what we call the virtual collaboration manifesto, wherein people, wherein we want to prevent people from being overly tired in attending meetings. So we created norms on how to um, attend meetings, what to prepare for, and as much as possible, don't set meetings at um, past five or before eight, before work hours those things. Um, we also uh, supported them by installing mechanisms on mental health, not just by inviting mental health professionals, of course, but we also enabled some of our employees, we call them volunteers or professional friends. We allowed them to go on trainings because we want this to be more sustainable. Uh, you know, in the company, we also have to manage our financials. So we need to enable ourselves and empower ourselves to be able to do mental health counseling as well. So we have employees whom we call professional friends, whom other employees can just tap, okay, in a confidential manner if they want to air out uh, some, they want to vent out some problems at work without their manager, uh, their managers knowing about it. So these are things that we uh, try to install in our companies. Uh, on the fun side, of course, we try to gamify things when we do a lab, uh, town halls, meetings, to ensure, and uh, we have a lot of change management initiatives in our company. So how do we ensure that they don't have, they try, remember all these things that we try to implement in the organization? So we try to gamify. We have a lot of quizzes and prizes. You know, employees, they like these things. Even the little stuff, they like receiving small tokens or prizes. So we try to gamify. And in that manner, it's a way for us to instill knowledge or new information to them. Uh, what else? Uh, we have also explored uh, things that go beyond the needs of our employees. But of course, our customers are our leaders, you know, so we need to focus also on cost management. In terms of hiring, while we have saved costs uh, because we have automated our recruitment process, we are, have also come up with a mechanism to uh, hire people. We try to study the roles of our employees, which roles can be further streamlined and which roles can actually be, um, can, what do you call this, can be tapped using uh, the human cloud or interns. Okay, So those things we try to explore because we would, we would like to have a balance of our employees being engaged and our uh, company financials being very stable. So we have to have a balance of those two. And so far, I think we're doing well because, um, sorry, I have to say that. I think we're doing well because uh, we have some, uh, a contest within a company, we call it uh, Gawad Kapit Bisig and Kaanib Sa Agos, wherein we promote cross-functional teamwork, either mandated by the company or through voluntary group work. And we can see that collaboration is really present because 
uh, the, the employees are able to come up with new um, things uh, that they're able to think of, processes to address turnaround time, customer service, revenue management, without the company prodding them on a regular basis. So I think the innov innovative tools, if you would call them, that we have introduced, either in the for form of fun events or serious restructuring, I think they're working because we have a number of um, entries. Every uh, we have It's already our second year of implementing it, or third. And uh, we, there are a lot of entries that come in and it's and we have to we had to invite external guests just um judges just to uh decide on who the winners of this uh contest would be so i think that's a way for us to know if we are effective in implementing this and of course the usual evaluation process for every new intervention that we implement whether it be in the form of um an um, um, a process or a tool that we use we send out an online survey to our employees to check how the tool or the process is working. And because of that, we are able to enhance our current processes. Evaluation is necessary and our employees are very open to these kinds of um, systems in our organization. Wonderful. And what I'm taking away from this is you guys have created an environment within your organization that is not only safe. We all know about compliance, the safety with everything the government mandates, that the World Health Organization mandates, and all of that. But what it sounds to me, the, the innovative part of what you're saying is you're going beyond that. You're creating not just a safe environment, but a fun environment, a productive environment, an environment that you know instills a level of engagement. And I love the idea of empowering people within the organization, converting them into resources, not necessarily psychiatrists, but people who can create a support system amongst their peers. I think that's very powerful as well. Let me squeeze in at least one personal question. And by the way, for anyone who's in attendance, if you'd like to ask questions, feel free to use the chat function and time permitting, we will cover or address as many as possible. So I guess one, the, my own personal question is, with all that you're doing and your organization is doing and all that you've just shared, there's always gonna be those one or few people who are still just adamant about not returning to work. In those cases, is there something that you do do differently or is there a protocol in place if someone and for whatever reason they might have just say, you know what, not having it, just don't want to come back to the office. What would you do in that circumstance? Well, I would um, answer in theory because so far we have not experienced that kind of employee. But uh, admittedly, during the start, we have had some hesitations on going back due to the virus, of course. So what we did was we did a lot of communication. We had a lot of comms, so town halls happening, emails and talks coming from doctors on a monthly basis, and then a regular campaign on stay health, uh, stay safe, stay, stay healthy, stay productive. We have a regular campaign on that. So those are nonstop. And we empower our leaders and make them accountable in talking to the employees, ensuring that there is what we call P2P or Puso Sa Puso, one-on-ones happening to scope the concerns of the employee. And if it's something that they can address, for example, I have a family, I have a baby, I have a mother who is um, already, what, 70 years old, and uh, I fear that I might bring the vir uh, virus to her. So our managers are empowered to decide on their own if they think it is something that uh, can be excused or they can give that leeway to the employee. So we are not very uh, strict at a corporate level that these are the only things that you can implement. So our man, we tell our uh, heads and managers that you know your operations. At the end of the day, you're accountable for your numbers. So you decide on how to um, navigate your way around the organization and to manage your people. Okay, so that includes producing results and ensuring that there was no, there won't be any form of disgruntlement among them. Wonderful, great, great insights. And boy, has that 15 minutes evaporated. <laughs> well, may ye, uh, on behalf of myself and everyone here, thank you for sharing those insights. I hope everyone was taking notes and writing fast and furiously. Uh, again, my pleasure to be here and to host this segment. 
Uh, if questions do come in, I, I think we will address them at some point. May, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who's made this happen. Good luck. Thank you so much, James, um, for hosting that and also to May for being available to guests this afternoon. Also for sharing your, your top management problem solving strategies. I really like that. I like the idea of the manifesto, but what really caught me attention was the P2P or Puso a Puso. And I think that's an example of integrating employee humanity that Jen of Savvy shared earlier. So again, thank you so much. It's also good that you do evaluate every intervention, but because of course not every intervention would work and it would be good to determine which one are we going to keep and which one are we going to throw away. And I think that's also an example of agility being open to learn fast, to fail fast, and moving forward. Thanks thanks again for sharing all those learnings. And coming from all these learnings, of all these challenges we all face, and also, of course, how to solve all these challenges, let's talk about what can we do, where can we go to re-energize, to take care of ourselves. And that is now, will be covered in our fourth segment, Perk Your Heart. And what we will talk about are the most chill destinations in the Philippines. I'm so excited. Finally, my classmate in Leadcom and also fellow trustee last year will host this segment. He is the Cluster HR Business for PTC Holdings, Mark Enric Hernandez. Hi, Mark. Good afternoon. Hi, Joe. Good afternoon. Finally, yes, I'm, I'm with you uh, hosting the People Manager on Cam. Uh, Thank you so much. It's a really pleasure for me. Uh, to be to be here with you and the rest of the team thank you thanks mark yeah i'm excited okay guys uh good afternoon to everyone um as, as mentioned by by joe we have to have some time for ourselves and uh we need some escape from this VUCA world that we uh, that we live in especially at work in in hr we do sometimes have to take care of ourselves, just like what she shared with us. We've learned a lot from the last three segments, and uh, I will not take much of your time. I would like to introduce to you our special guest for this afternoon. He will talk about great escape options that HR teams can go to so that they can relax. Uh, tama na yung... Uh, mountain hiking or uh, uh, beach deering or mountaineering. We'll talk about something else. I'd like to introduce to you our speaker for this afternoon, the host and executive producer of Rec Hunter. It's being shown in ANC, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Mr. Wawi Wong. Hi, Wawi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Nice to meet you. It's How a are pleasure you? to be with you, Wawi. How are you today? Oh, very, very well. Actually, I was looking forward to this day to share what we have underwater. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know, I know. It's it's, <laughs> it's it's also my my dream. It's in part of my back, at least, that I'll be able to do what you do. You know, it's easy mm -hmm. because, you know, you're in the perfect place. You know, when you think about the underwater world, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard about the Coral Triangle, which we are a part of. So the Cor Coral Triangle would have the best of the best of species, diversity, all in this Coral Triangle. Now, there's this just but the latest study, maybe probably about 10 years ago, it was declared that within this Coral Triangle, the most diverse place is actually the Verde Island Strait, oh. which is up two and a half hours from us <laughs> you're you're already there so when you say oh, it is the richest of the richest in the world that we i would say that almost well more than 80 to 90 percent of the world's underwater creatures are born here wow yeah it's amazing Deva. it's amazing <laughs> why do you have why do we all leave uh, or, or travel outside the country right exactly the point yes <laughs> when we all when we just have it right we'll, here in our backyard. We'll definitely get in touch with you after this talk. <laughs> but I have a few questions to you, Wawi, uh, that, that our viewers will definitely be uh, welcoming to, to learn from you. My, uh, the first question is, uh, what prompted you to go into diving? Ah, well, 
You know, the funny part here is um, when I learned how to scuba, well, before I decided, I, I never really knew how to swim. In fact, I was just sharing with Miss Ari a while ago that uh, I actually drowned three times when I was a young boy. But uh, there was a point when I saw Boracay in the early 90s, and it was so beautiful. And yet I didn't know how to dive and swim. I had a, you know, a salvavita just yeah, going yeah. through the water. And then after a while, I got into work. It was a stress. It was a stressful time for me back in the IT days. That's why you'll see the permanent effect, right? <laughs> I've lost all my hair, and to dilute myself with stress, I found solace going into the water, scuba diving. So I learned to trade, and it was just but amazing. So that was my way to distress myself every weekend <laughs> during my early days two decades ago. Okay. Uh, do you still do that every weekend now or every, well, not, every other week <laughs> at least? May, for now, it's happening like once a month because of, okay. you know, we're all coming from the pandemic, but mm -hmm. now we're all going back and it's just but amazing, especially that we are in the Philippines. It truly is, but the best. Yeah. Speaking of that incident of yours in, in, in uh, during your younger years where you got drowned for three, in, in three times, uh, do you need to learn how to swim before you start doing diving? Ah, yeah, the typical question. You know, you don't need to. It's oh, yeah. it's a totally different skill. Swimming is learning how to float. Diving yeah. is learning how to sink, right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, the best part here is that I'm sure some of you have already tried learning how to swim. And when, once you do, I'm sure that you'll be able to drink a lot of water. <laughs> but you know what? In scuba... You don't get to drink any water at all because 100 percent of the time you have air in your mouth coming okay. from your tank so it's so safe you know and that's how amazing it is you don't you don't need to learn how to swim at all okay guys so that's the first tip that uh while is uh, telling us you don't have to learn how to swim because <laughs> you need to sink exactly anyway, yeah um Quickly, from Manila, let's say, where is the best part where you can start learning to dive? Oh, well, the, I would say 99% of Filipinos, scuba diver Filipinos, were born in Anilao. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that is the best place where we can all learn how to dive. It's two and a half, drive, uh, two and a half hours drive from Manila. There are over 60 dive sites in Anilao, and I would say that it is a place I call world-class. We oh, yeah. have beautiful coral gardens, and we are uh, Anilao is much famous for the small creatures. Yeah, um, you know, for for underwater photographers, that's a haven for. Well, it's more of a like collector's item. Mm -hmm. If you could find these nudibranchs that we're famous of in mm -hmm. Anilao, so mm -hmm. there are these colorful uh, slugs with no shells. Mm -hmm. They're amazingly beautiful and super colorful. I would say that if you dive somewhere, let's say in a different country, for every 10 dives, you'll probably find one nudibranch. In Anilao, for every dive that you have, you should at least find anywhere 10 to 20 nudibranchs per mm. dive. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's interesting. But next to my question is, do you need to learn how to dive in a, in a pool before going to the sea? Uh, it depends on your comfort level. Now, once you learn how, if you want to get into, uh, you know, into scuba diving, now you would have to talk to your dive instructor. Uh -huh. There are choices where, of course, the pool should always be there. But in cases where there are no pools, you can mm -hmm. go directly to the sea, but only on the shoreline okay. to do, okay. you know, to do your uh, your skills training. And after mm -hmm. which, you go deeper and deeper and deeper, okay. exploring. Our underwater world yeah okay that's lovely before i do my next couple of questions uh wawi i believe you have prepared for us a short video that we can share to everyone oh, how sure. amazing diving is well what we have right here is uh, a footage from cebu it was one of uh, my team's project for philippine airlines about three years mm -hmm. ago if i'm not mistaken yeah, this is showcase how beautiful Cebu is because it's truly diverse being in Cebu. Go ahead, please. All right, let's watch it.
Thank, Thank you for you. that video that you prepared for Philippine Airlines and for us. How deep were those that <laughs> there were very uh, varying places those ones you, you see with the small fish sometimes anywhere from 20 to 60 feet deep when we went to the wrecks i will be 80 to about 150 feet deep and when you saw the uh thresher shark you know we're very famous for the treasure sharks in 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 uh, malapasqua mm. that would be 120 feet deep wow yeah it's amazing how, how long can you stay on that deep before you have to uh, well, be on top, yeah. Well, basically it depends on your skill level. So if you're, if you are very trimmed and you're, you know how to move around the currents, yeah. you could, I would say a tank should last you about an hour on the average. Okay. Right? The, the shallower you are, the longer time you'll have with it. The deeper you go, the shorter time you'll have, uh, you know, you'll have time to go scuba diving. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I remember the the scuba divers during Iron Man and Cebu. Uh, they're taking photos about the, for for all of us swimming, trying to ah. trying to survive the swim. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in Iron Man, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing again an Iron Man in August. So, yeah. Oh, good luck. You know, my wife also is an Iron Man. Man. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. She's she's one of the uh the famous ladies in the Iron Man scene. <laughs> and you are in the diving scene. Yes, yes. <laughs> Both love waters, yeah. Okay. Amazing waters. Yes. Uh another question, by the way, and and I would like to welcome uh our viewers to put in their their questions for wawi uh, we'll try to answer them for you for those who are interested what kind of preparations do they need to to have or they need to, to, to do well it's quite easy if in case you're not sure is this a thing for me or not mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. this thing we call as discovery dive or introduction introductory dive in introductory dive so all you have to do is go to any dive resort so much there's a lot in batangas just book for a dive instructor or a dive master saying that i would like to have a chance to see whether it's a good thing for me or not all right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. basically they'll dress you up as a complete in in, in complete scuba gear but okay. You won't be managing the, the controls. They'll be controlling your BCD ah, for you. Okay. So it feels as if like you're riding a car, but you're only on the passenger seat. So they'll okay. do the, all the controls and just watch. And if you love it, they always give you a package on, uh, you know, giving you a certification on the first level, mm -hmm. which is open mm -hmm. water. So it's that no. simple. That simple, yeah? Oh, yeah, well, yeah well. that simple. <laughs> so guys, it's one of the escapes that we can do sabi ko nga sa inyo forget about having coffee after work let's dress down go to the uh, the nearest beach anilao and uh, let's try diving this time marami sa atin kasi we we, we do uh, uh what beer <laughs> well you can also do the same while you're you know, after each dive di ba? <laughs> yeah. why not why not i'll take note of that while we yeah have it I ready in the that. boat <laughs> yes, yes sir so uh anything that you'd like to to share with us uh, aside from the questions that i've raised already uh, anything that you'd like to um uh tell us well, about amc's uh, rec hunter oh well sure well well, my team and I, we uh, we have a series in. Uh, well, there, it's ANC. There is in. It's also in I want TFC. Showing around the world. All right, it's called Wreck Hunter. So basically, the story revolves around shipwrecks we have in our country, and we featured five important ones here. There's one in Anilao. There's one in Coron. Well, two in Coron, and. One in Subic, one in Palawan, and some of them revolves around love stories, history from World mm. War II. Mm. And, you know, all of them had stories. These ships had stories when they were still above water. And when they were sunk, well, we're going to tell you about the new story 
that they uh, the new story that they have given underwater for mm. marine life. Mm. It's amazing. So w- once you see those shipwrecks, they're covered in thick corals where new fish actually lay eggs on, where where they hide to survive. Well, then, then a new ecosystem emerges from there. It's an amazing yeah. story. So if yeah. you can, please do watch. Uh, the way you're uh, telling, is, t- telling us those stories, uh, parang, yeah, I'm, I'm re- we're really amazed already without watching <laughs> the, 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 the segment yet. But uh, I have a question from uh, Ms. Joanne. Is there yes. a limit for those who want to start diving? Is there a limit? Age limit. Oh, there's no age limit. You know, I have colleagues. Well, the oldest one I know is almost 90 years old. Wow. Still scuba diving <laughs> in Anilao. It's because it's that safe. It's not as if, you know, in triathlon, you, know? you have to be quite fit to do all of these things. But basically, when you go scuba diving, you're just floating in water. How hard is that? You're just navigating through the waters. And, it, and as you go through the corals, your engagement with the creatures, it's all as if you're just walking in a garden, right? Just having this beautiful interaction with them. You know, one of those lovely interactions I have, I could never forget would be with a, I think it was a 30 foot long whale shark in Tubataha. Just 30 foot long, and here I was, so small, yeah. and I was just two feet away from its eye. And you know that I am feeling him, and he's feeling me, or just watching each other, amazed by how we that coexist. Close, that yes. close encounter you had. Yeah? Exactly. It's not wow. typical, you know, when you're above water, but you get to meet the, the biggest creatures here. Yeah. I mean, the, the top of top predators, lions, right? Cheetahs. I doubt if you live <laughs> in the next hour if you meet them. No, but when you know you when you're underwater, you're very safe. A lot of people think sharks are scary. In fact, they're not. They're, you know, as I would always say, kungano katakotang tilapia among us. It's the same with them. They're just bigger. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Again, again, uh, guys. Uh, let's thank Wally. Let's give him a warm applause for giving us some inform a lot of information about scuba diving and we can all start from scratch uh walang age limit and it's never too quick. late yeah never too late quick getaway anila batangas as he said and uh again wow we thank you very much for gracing maraming, this maraming segment salamat maraming salamat sayo. uh on to you uh john thank you thank Bye. you Thank you so much, Mark and Wabi. And very timely because um, actually, because my daughter is coming home this December and she wants to learn scuba diving. So I have been inquiring. And actually, just this morning, I, I received um, an, a response from one of the diving schools that I have been contacting. She wants, Wabi, she, my, my daughter wants to go to Malas- Malapasqua. I just actually booked our ticket to Cebu because she's coming home this December. So, sabi ko parang. Because I've been thinking, should I go, should I do it as well or not? And then this segment is like <laughs> the answer to my question. I should go for it. So thank you so much, Wawi, for sharing really, really very chill um, destinations to go and chill activities to do. So we really appreciate that. And I was also browsing through the episodes of Wreck Hunters. Wow, very great feedback and also great um. So, so many great episodes here I'm seeing, and I think I will do, um, I will be watching this after this show. So thank you again for gracing our show, Wabi. And I also want to say hello to Celine and Leanne and Casey who are um, watching with us. We actually have a question from Ria. How much is an investment if I want to dive? Probably um, Mark can, um, Mark or Wabi can, you know, share with us their insights on that one. Um, I think I actually also asked that. Um, I have a few numbers, Ria, if you would like me to share with you the quotations I received from the different diving schools. I've been reaching out, Anilao, Malapasqua, so I have um, numbers um, to share with you if you'd like me to share, if you'd like that information. 
All right. So thank you so much for those who, who joined us this afternoon. Thanks to all the our our HR professionals who shared their responses to our question during our first episode. And also, of course, to Jen, um, Simons Castillo, Communications Manager of Savvy, May Miranda, Talent Management and OD Head of Vanilla Water, and Wawi Wong, um, host and executive producer of Breck Hunter. Thank you so much for gracing us your presence and sharing your insights and knowledge this afternoon. And I would like to welcome back our segment host. We have our editor-in-chief, Joe Vataikan, Mark Cancino, James Hargrove, and Mark Hernandez. And I am surrounded by gentlemen this afternoon. So great to be sharing this screen with all of you. I'm curious. Um, I, I actually have two questions. One is, um, do you have any engagement strategies that you'd like to share with our viewers? And also, what do you do to chill out? I mean, I think this, those are two focus um, among many. Um, how do you take care of yourself? I think that's very important. Anyone who would like to start? I'll go for a mark. I see you on my screen. <laughs> oh, <I'll> get <laughs> What do I do uh, to escape from a very strenuous work, uh, tiring work? Uh, well, I go for a bike. I go for a run. But uh, nowadays, I'm uh, I'm swimming again. So th those are the things that I, I, I do distress myself uh, from work. Thanks a lot, Mark. And thanks. Mark has been very helpful in providing guidance um, because my son is into biking. Really appreciate, Mark, all your tips. Uh, what kind of bike, where to buy. Really appreciate that. He has a lot of information there, I tell you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> thanks a lot. A pleasure of mine. Yeah, thank you. Job, how about you? I, I do a lot of writing and reading and, of course, listening to music. Very basic, cost-effective. And I tried diving, by the way. Joanne and I, I tried diving off Mactan. And I was supposed to ask Huawei if it's okay, if it's cost efficient if I use LPG instead of oxygen because I can cook whatever I catch. <laughs> uh, maybe next time I'll ask him. But when you come to Cebu, Joanne, glad to welcome you here. I'll show you some of the dive spots. I, I did diving, the deepest was about 100 for me. Wow. 100, oh, 100 centimeters. Wow. <laughs> That's how deep I went. <laughs> I don't know how to swim, but I did diving once, so that was incredible. Thanks, thanks a lot, um, Joe. And James, good morning to you. I know James is in the US. It's actually mm. really wow. very early morning Thank for you, him. James. You Thank you, James. Yes. No worries. <laughs> I'm used to it. I love it. I just relocated back to the US just to let everyone know. A lot of people here probably know who I am, but I've been living in the Philippines for the past 15 years. And I have oh. I have been to Cebu. I have swam with the whale sharks there, uh, wow. at least on one occasion. I'm not a diver or an avid diver. My mother is. Uh, she's She is 67, which is not old, but she still actively dives around the world. I forgot her level, her skill level cer certification, but she does shipwrecks. That's her favorite thing to do. Oh, nice. And one of these days I'll go with her. Going to your question, uh, Joanne, uh, I'm a beach person as well. Not so much diving, but I love beach volleyball, surfing. People often ask me, why did you move from the Philippines? Well, it wasn't necessarily by choice. It was just some things that happened. But I look forward to being back there very, very soon uh, to enjoy the pristine beaches that I got, that I grew accustomed to. Wow. Yeah. And there are so many. I think, I'm not sure if you have all, if you've gone to Apo Reef as well. We just love that place as well. So I think many, um, almost all of us here are, are beach people, nature people. So very great way to unwind. And I'm sure our guests also would have ideas on what we can do to take care of ourselves. We are also busy, also pressured, and it's good to every once in a while go out and have fun. So thank you so much again for joining us, Mark, James, and Jove. And also, of course, Mark and Sinu as well. Thank you so much. And to our guests, thank you so much. And thank us, thanks a lot. And of course, for all of us, who are, for all of you who are watching us, I'm sure that you are all leaders in one way or another, and that is not an easy job. Managing people is one of the most challenging tasks we have. And we all know that being a leader is like being a captain of a ship. Sometimes we make so many decisions, and if we make one mistake, 
we all the entire blame comes on you so that's really um challenging especially nowadays problems just keep on mounting so fast and us leaders we must be resilient in our quest to create and sustain a very good culture for our organization and also of course take care of the well-being that we serve as uh, i was reading an article um, earlier and it says that the best leaders are the best problem solvers and i'm sure that you all here who are watching are best leaders in your own way and you are all embracing your role as problem solving. So thank you so much for that. And I would like everyone to check out the People Manager magazine online, www.peoplemanager.ph. And we would like to invite you to our show this July. Um, we will be featuring so many new guests again, and that will be a wonderful discussion. I hope you will not miss that. Inviting everyone to our annual conference, the PMAP annual conference happening on October 12 to 14 this year of course and the theme is co-regeneration and that will focus on the critical role that hr and people managers play in the efforts to rebuild our communities and restore the faith and confidence of our people especially after what happened from the COVID-19 global pandemic. So do reach out and register now. Our show is open to partners and sponsors. Please contact PMAP, details are on your screen right now. And for those interested to, to join People Management Association of the Philippines, also contact the email address that is on your screen right now. I want to acknowledge and introduce the committee and the people behind this online program, our president, Ellen Polito, COPA and the Board of Trustees, our committee members of PMAP's Branding and Marketing, Media and Communications Committee, of course, Job here, our editor-in-chief of the People Manager magazine. We also have our technical team helping us behind this show, Sarah, Jansen, Nadine, and Dell. Thank you so much for your time and for your creativity. And again, Mark, James, and Joe, thank you so much. To all of our viewers, we hope that this episode was helpful and insightful. A big thank you for joining us again this afternoon. Stay safe, everyone. Until our next episode happening in July. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.